Brother Frostclaw, Brother Infernus, Sergeant Cassius, take a knee! Brother Grimm's laying down the lead. Join the team. Hey team! Let's do that again, that was sloppy. Hey team, this is the McGuire Review, and today we're going to be taking a look at something that is very, very special to me, so let's lock in and get ready to go. All right, Space Marines Adventure from Games Workshop. This is an excellent title. I have had so much fun with this game. It is a ages 8 plus, 30 to 45 minutes. However, I can blow through these games uh, one-shot, you know, adventures pretty quickly. It is very, very simple, and it's a co-op one to four. So you can solo this one, and it is a fantastic soloable game. I highly, highly recommend this game, team. So I'll start off with that, and I'll tell you why. Uh, just really quick before we get started, I will be using my handy-dandy Dogmite Sentinel box here for the uh, dice tray. So we will pull, if you guys haven't seen this, unbelievable product. Go check that out. This video isn't about that. Bear, hold this, please. Thank you. I'm going to use this as my dice tray. We'll put it right up here because I do kind of dub this unit as that. We're going to go through every component on the board, and then we're going to do a quick round of gameplay so you got a good feel for how this works. I do have to give a shout-out to Rob's Tabletop World if you guys haven't checked that channel out. I just happened to be perusing through YouTube, and he happened to be doing a live on this particular game. And I've seen this game in the store quite a few times, and and just I thought it was something different than what it is, and we'll talk about that. Uh, so I never really picked it up, but I saw him playing the game, and I thought, you know, this game is awesome. I'm going to go pick it up and give it a try. So glad that I did, and I have to give him the shout-out for that because he is the reason why I went and picked up this game. And it is absolutely fantastic. I love this game, team. I've been playing this game non-stop since I picked it up. And maybe it's just my thing, but I think it's got some great mechanics to it, and I think they're executed very, very well in what you get here. Now, where can you get this? You can get this game at Barnes & Nobles. Don't quote me on this. I don't know if you can get this game anywhere else. And the reason I say that is because I can't find it anywhere else. I can only find this game at Barnes & Nobles, so it may be something that Barnes & Nobles just exclusively carries. Maybe not. It does not have any logo on it that says exclusive Barnes & Nobles anywhere that I can find. Uh, Games Workshop does have some games with Barnes & Nobles right now that do have the exclusive Barnes & Nobles sticker on it. This one does not, but you can get this game at Barnes & Nobles. I'm going to put this box right down here. Actually, before I do, let me show you the insert of the box because it's got a nice insert as well. It does come with some little baggies to, uh, you know, collect some of the components. There isn't a lot of chits or components in this game, as you can see, but there are some baggies to hold those, and then it's got a nice insert here to hold each one of your levels. We'll talk about why this is so important, and I love this design, as well as your dice, any of the cards, and the, there's a nice deep pocket here for your fantastic five Games Workshop miniatures. I'll tell you, the Games Workshop quality, it's always there. Now, let's put this down to the side. Bear, if you could hold that for me, please. Thank you. All right, so what's this game go for? Just take a guess, right? If you don't already know. You look at the game. Okay, not including this, right? This is not part of the game. This is our dog, Mike, Sentinel, right? But if we look at everything else here that's on the table that's part of this game, generally games that come with nice, thick cardboard stock, really nice uh, boards that you can play on, uh, a number of chits. There's a number of chits that are in this bag as well. Some of the monsters and the minions that you're going to be, uh, the Necrons as they're called in this game, that you're going to be battling. As well as all the cards, the artwork. I mean, these five fantastic Games Workshop miniatures. And I will say these are limited. Uh, whenever Games Workshop does these games, these are limited sculpts for 2017 that come in this game. So if you, you know, want these sculpts, you might pick up this game just to get the five sculpts. Something like this in today's market is easily going to be around the $50 price tag, sometimes even $60. Team, this game retails for $39.99. That's right, $39.99. And when I saw the price, and I never had looked at the price before on the box, I was blown away because I thought, well, 39 bucks. Good lord, I mean, you'd pay... $39 is probably worth it just to get these five limited sculpts from Games Workshop, much less all the rest of this game and a fantastic game that it is. 
And here's the beauty to Barnes & Nobles. Uh, if you're a Barnes & Nobles regular, which I am for many different things, they have a fantastic board game and collectible game area now they've built out through their store. Uh, this is really not a plug for Barnes & Nobles at all. I'm not sponsored by Barnes & Nobles. Hashtag should be. But the real secret is if you have the Barnes & Nobles membership, that little card that you pay for every year where you get 10% off everything you buy, go in with that and mix that with one of their... Uh, you know, monthly discount codes they send out to their members for 15% off, 20% off. And next thing you know, after your member discount and your coupon, you've got this game for about $30. And that's exactly what I did. Um, so I got this game for about 30 bucks because of those uh, coupons and member discounts. And it's like, you, you just, team, you can't beat the price for what you're getting here. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's talk about what we've got on the table. You are going to be getting a little... Uh, it's kind of, you know, it's a thick, uh, thick material bag here that's going to hold the various different Necrons that you're going to run into when you play the game. So the only miniatures you're going to get are your actual, whoops, are your actual guys here. And then the enemies are going to come in these little round tokens, which are really cool. They've got some nice cool artwork on them for the, um, the four different types that you're going to run into here. And we'll look at all four of those when we get to our cards. So we'll put these in the bag for now until we're ready to set up our scenario. You're going to get your rule book, which is nicely laid out, uh, high color, text, really spaced out well, very quick read, and you're ready to go. There's only a few pages that you're going to go through that are going to explain the base play of the game. There are one, two, three one-shot missions in this game, or you can play all three of these missions in one giant expansive campaign which is really cool you can also add in these and we'll get to these cards here in a second these advanced cards which then start to modify each one of the single shot missions that are included in the game so there's lots of different ways that you can um, modify the difficulty of an individual quest or mission as they call it in this game as well uh, as playing the entire campaign and I, you know i really like that um, these are technically actually called levels, level one, level two, and level three. And you can use any one of these boards for those one-shot levels. And these boards are double-sided as well, and each side is different. So you actually have six different boards that you can choose from to play any of these levels, which is awesome. So you can just see there's tons of ways to customize your gameplay experience. And that's one thing that's kept me coming back over and over to this game is I can play level one six different ways, and then I can add in uh, the advanced cards, and then I can add in more Necron cards to the activations that are going to happen on every single gameplay to make it a little bit harder than even what the advanced cards would do for that particular level. Just excellent, okay? So there's a few pages that explain the main game. Then it's going to explain how to do level two. It's going to explain how to do level three. And then there's going to be an entire page here that's going to explain how to set up and play that campaign. Then what you're going to find here in the very back is just some instructions on how to put your miniatures together. So we'll go right to the miniatures because these were done really nicely as well. You can glue these if you want to. I did not. I popped them right out of the sprues. Is it sprues? or spurs. I can't remember. So I popped them right out of that plastic thing they come in, and I basically just popped them right together. Now these come with really nice long pegs that go into, you know, a hole where it needs to fit in. So it's a nice, nice long peg, and it's a good tight fit, um, which, you know, once you push them together, they really require no glue. Um, so you don't need to glue these. And you may want to not glue it because these models actually come with two different head styles on every single one of the models. And it's generally a style where it's more like this guy here. And we're going to bring the camera in and get in close on all this stuff. Bear, why don't you load up the overhead video? Thank you. So we can see some of this stuff and some of the components as we go through. But every one of these, much like a red model here, does have more of just that human face sculpt I went with and then you have here Brother Grimm. Oh Brother Grimm and he's wearing the uh, more of the mechanical sort of helmet style that goes with that armor. He's kind of got the big huge bolt gun which is this this guy this character Brother Grimm is amazing. He is one of my main dudes in the uh, in the levels. 
lays down the fire. Awesome. Okay, so you're going to get these sculpts. They all got two heads. Uh, and you may want to switch those out. If you glue it, you're kind of locked in. But if you don't glue it, you can just pop the arms off, pop the chest, put in the new head, put it all back together. I don't know. That's probably not a sound I should make. So that's how that works. We'll jump right over here. We've got a little insert that comes in the game that talks about some of their other games that they have. Uh, some that are like this and that some that are uh, different. Um, these are a little bit more epic style games, I would say, that's in their little marketing pamphlet here. So you'll want to take a look at that. We then have dice. There is one for each one of the colored miniatures that you'll see there. Uh, so they do each have their own die. It is a six-sided die. There's nothing else that's special about this other than the color. So if you have your own, uh, you know, different colored dies that um, you would rather use, you can do that. No problem. I like the ones that come here in the game. I think they're uh, a very nice done die. they got a nice, good glossy look to them and I found that they are well balanced. So when we go into um, these cards here, these are the levels of the game. So we talked about how you could play this game on three different uh, levels. These levels are double sided and you can use any one of these tiles to play any one of the levels. How you define that level is with this deck right here. And this is the deck that will show you your mission briefings. You'll come here and you'll read what your mission is, what your objective is, how do you win and how do you lose. And then there is a deck of cards that are defined for that level. So level one is the easiest, level two gets a little harder, level three is the hardest. And there are different types of Necrons that were spawn in depending on which level that you're playing. So that's really a nice mechanic. I like they went that route because what they could have done is just had one giant deck that they could have called the Labyrinth deck, and that's what this is called. And it could have had, you know, 100 cards in it or, or 200 cards in it or whatever, and you would shuffle those cards out, you know, up and maybe take out a few, and that would be your deck for the level. I like that they customize the deck for each one of the levels because it gives that level a completely different feel, and it really adds that richness when you go through the campaign, and it also scales properly each level that you go through. And that's one of the things I love about this game is it is balanced very, very well and it scales very well as you go through the levels. It's not like it gets significantly harder. There is a nice progressive scaling as you go through. Okay, that's what you're gonna find here in these three cards. And then where here are our advanced cards where we talked about that. There's different types of, uh, here's your campaign cards that are included in there as well as cards that are specific to um, making the game more difficult. And there's also these challenge cards they call them that are included that uh, you can pick and randomize and just say hey for this game um, I've played this you know this level a few times and I want it to be a little bit harder so I'm going to throw down you know this challenge which for instance this one here the dispersion shield uh, says the dispersion shield is a heavy slab of armor carried one arm carried on one arm by the mighty Lich Guard. The shield protects him from shots and blades. If you are using this challenge, the primary Lich Guard is not necessarily removed when successfully attacked. Instead of being destroyed each time he is successfully attacked, place a damage counter next to him. Only when a second counter has been placed is he actually destroyed and removed. So the Lich Guard is something that is actually on level two, and he's kind of like a little bit of a boss for that level. And on level two, you're able to just sort of kill him. He takes a roll of a six, a crit. And if you're able to do that, you can take him out. This basically just says you got to take him out twice to be able to move on to do the next thing within this level. So that's an example of some of these little challenge cards you can add in. There's, and there's quite a few of them here that you have you can add into the game to modify any one of the levels. All right. The cards that we have here are actually our character cards. So each, you know, one of the... Um, the brothers here are going to have their own um, card on the front. It's going to say their name. It's going to have their range. And it's going to have how many actions they're able to take when it's their turn. Um, and those actions can be made up from attacking or moving. So you can do as many of those things as you want on your turn. But you only, for this here, Brother Grimm, you'd have three of them. Every move is an action, every attack is an action, and the range shows you how far you can actually shoot or attack from to be successful, and then your dice are going to roll against the, uh, the various different monster types or Necron types, and we'll talk about that here in a second. There's just a number on there, and you just have to meet or exceed that number 
to take him out. So it's very, very simple from a combat uh, perspective. Then every single one of the brothers is going to have their own special ability that they can do in the game every time it's their turn. You're also going to have some power cards, some different cards here that you're going to be able to use. Each one of your characters will have one of those. If you're playing the campaign, you can gain more than one at one time. But if you're playing a one-shot level, you'll have one of those as well that will give you a special ability. It might be a special grenade. It might be an ability that makes you sort of go into a berserker state where you can just fire and kill everything around you for free. Uh, there's different types of actions that you can take. That's what these cards are going to look like. And on the back, it's going to be the exact same, but it's going to say wounded. How you get wounded and how combat works in this game is also very, very simple. Um, it has to do with how these Necrons spawn on the board. If one was to ever spawn and need to land on a spot that you are on, that would immediately hit you. So there is no defense and attack. It's just if it needs to go where, where one of your brothers are, you will get hit. And that will make you then become wounded. You'll just flip that card over. And then if you get hit again, you're dead and you're out of service. You're kind of out of the game. You've been taken out of the game. And that's how it works as far as your life for these. Very, very simple. You basically have two hit points. And once those two hit points are taken away, you're out. Okay, these cards here are going to represent the Necrons that are in the game. Really cool. Great artwork on these cards. And these are just the four different types you're going to interact with. You're not going to interact with this Overlord until you get to level three. You're not going to interact with the Lich Guard until you get to level two. Level one, you will be interacting with both the Necron Warrior and the Necron Immortal. There is a little bit of flavor text here that tells you about that particular Necron. It is no special ability. It doesn't do anything. It just gives you a little flavor for what that, you know, different enemy is about and then there is a big number that's on this card and that is all you're going to see on this card and that's going to be the number that you have to roll on your die you have to meet or exceed that number to be able to uh, effectively defeat that necron on the board you may think well that's really easy just roll a die i get that number they're dead and it is however the fun in this game is these are going to be constantly spawning out across the board based on the labyrinth cards that you're drawing and what you're drawing out of this bag. And that's what becomes really interesting because you don't know what's going to come out. It might be one of the easier Necron Warriors, only takes a three, or it might be a Necron Lynch Guard that takes a five to beat that comes out. And they're going to be coming out in random spots depending on the card that you draw from the labyrinth. And how they come out makes a difference as well. If these little points here are called spawn points, that's what I like to call them. They're, they're, technically, they have a different name, but, but I refer to them as spawn points. So these little areas right here, uh, if there's nothing on it and it says, hey, put a Necron on a spawn point, there's nothing there, okay, fine. I put the, put the Necron around the spawn point, and that's where it goes. However, there's already a Necron on the spawn point. It's going to call reinforcements, and you're going to have to put a... Necron that's adjacent to every single spot of where that Necron is on that spawn point. So now you could be pulling out, you could be populating three different Necrons or more on, on the board uh, versus just one. So it can scale and get pretty difficult as they're populating on the board. These cards here are going to be the actual action cards and all they're going to have is a big symbol on them and that symbol is going to match one of our brothers here or it's going to be the necron symbol which means we got to pull from the labyrinth deck and we got to pull out a card and do what it says and those are very simple as well they primarily just spawn necrons on the board but there are some that do affect the board almost kind of like an event all right, and then the last thing we're going to have are these cards right here. And you will see this little card that says Open Now. In each one of these decks, on the top, it will when you get it out of the package, it will actually tell, you know, Open Now or Do Not Open. And they say Do Not Open because they don't want you to open it until you're ready to actually play that particular level. So then you can kind of experience it and see what's in it. Open Now are the cards you're going to want to get out right from the beginning so you can start to set up the board. These are going to be all the little special power cards that you can get for each one of the brothers that are included in the game. And these are really cool. And there's tons of different things from just like, you know, the, the, here's something that actually allows you to heal if you're, if you're wounded. There's, um, you know, there's different types of like frag grenades, which are really cool. 
and then there are actual things that are only uh, able to be uh, attached to certain types of brothers. And these will be random. You'll draw two of these for each one of the characters that are playing in the game, and then you will uh, decide as amongst the players um, which one you'll keep for each one of them. So you can only have one of them, but you will be dealt two uh, for each player that's in the game. Um, and again, some of them only can be used with certain characters, and then some of them uh, will give you sort of a general ability, and then some of them are like this, which are those kind of like items that you can use. So these are very cool. We'll shuffle these up because we are ready now to uh, we are ready now to play the game. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick setup. We're going to do um, we're going to do something on level two. That way we can have all of the different types of um, Necrons. Oh, Necrons included. So let me look here and make sure. Uh, I got all of them, so yes. Okay, I got all the different Necrons included. I will need one of them out. And we're just going to do one round of gameplay. Um, I'm not sure if I hit these, but these are two more of the Necron cards you can put in the activation order deck if you want to make the game even harder. So another way to kind of customize the game and make it even harder. I'm going to pull our dice tray down here because we'll need that. Um, and then we've got our bag, it's all shook up. I know that we're gonna need one of these guys. So now what we're gonna do is we'll have our characters. These right here are the portals in the game. Now one of them is open and one of them is not. And once you activate sort of the main thing for each one of these levels, whether it's a control panel or in level two, you gotta take out this Lich Lord uh, or Lich Guard. Uh, once you do that, then you can open these up. So we're going to put those there, there, and I'm going to put it here. And we'll just say that this is, when you set up a single level, you'll you'll set it up with just one of these boards, and then you'll put a staircase wherever you want. Let's say it's there. The Lich Lord is going to be here. On this one, there's a little tiny symbol on the board of where he goes. And then let's go ahead and we won't need these little counters. This is for level three. So we'll put these right up here. And we will not need the, um, actually I do think we do go ahead and put that down. It's kind of a control panel. We'll, we'll just put it down, we'll put him there. And then what we'll do is I am actually gonna use these four characters. This is kind of my main crew here that I use. And you can set those up on these four staircases in any order that you want. Now the order is important because some of these guys have longer range than other guys. This guy has the longest range and you can shoot through other characters. The thought there is that your other characters sort of get out of the way or drop down, take a knee, and he's firing over the top, which is pretty cool. So I like to put um, I like to put um, Cassius up front. We'll put Infernus right there and we'll put Frostclaw right there and then I got Brother Grimm at the very back. Looking good, all right? Don't need the red die, I need these dice here. We'll put them right over here for each one of the, I'll put them right here for each one of the characters. And then we'll go to the character cards and we'll pull out the characters that we're gonna be using. So we've got these four guys. It's gonna get a little tight here uh, because of how I got it on the table, but that should be fine. We'll go here to our uh, action deck of our cards. And what we'll do is we will uh, select one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. So it's two for each character. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we'll be able to look at all these cards and we can only keep four of them. So uh, let's see, a blessing. Use this when we want to activate the console uh, on level one or two. They will be successful on a dice roll or five or six. Interesting, that might be good to keep for the long run when we're trying to activate this console because it's only a six, but if we can do it with a five or a six, that's good. Anvil of Strength is only for a Brother in Furnace, and I am going to take that. It's basically a way for him to just lay down the fire. Uh, Warrior Born, this is a cool one. This card can only be given to Brother Frostclaw. Play this card at the start of Frostclaw's turn. He can perform two free attack actions against adjacent Necrons this turn instead of only one. Furthermore, until the end of the turn, if Frostclaw performs an attack against uh, a Necron in an adjacent square and that attack fails, you can re-roll the dice. Ooh, that's really good. So I'm going to keep that out. Maybe going to do that one. Red Thirst. This art card can only be given to get Brother Gabriel. We don't have Brother Gabriel. Rapid Fire can only be given... Let's see, play this card in point during the Space Marine's turn. This, this 
This space marine uh, immediately attacks each Necron that it can see in its range. Okay, rapid fire is really good. We're going to keep that. We're not going to use that one. Uh, we're not going to use... Okay, so these are the four that we're going to use. We're going to give uh, Codex Discipline to uh, Sergeant Cassius here because he is the only one that can use that. We're going to move these up a little bit. See how we can do this. Um, there we go. He's going to get a Codex of Discipline, which basically allows everybody to take an action. This guy's going to get Anvil of Strength. We're going to go Warrior Born uh, with our Frost Claw, because only he can use that. And then Rapid Fire is going to go to Brother Grimm, which is an excellent pairing for Brother Grimm. All right, the rest of these cards are now out for this game. We're then going to come to this deck. Actually, we're going to grab these right here, because in this board, we're going to get rid of the Overlord. We won't need him. And we are going to be battling potentially the Lich Guard, the Immortal, or the uh, just standard Necron Warrior. So we'll put all three of those there that we can see. And really, it's just a reference point when we run into them. Okay? And now what we're going to do is go to our activation deck. We're going to ensure that we only have the symbols for the guys that we have. Okay, so, and then we need to have two for each one of the guys, and we need to have four of the Necron activations, and we do. Okay, so we're going to put that together, and then we're going to shuffle this deck really good. And this is what makes this game very cool, is the turn order is dictated by the draw of the card. And every round is over once all these cards have been drawn. So that's really cool. It isn't like... And this is the reason why. So this is an important part of this review video. This is the reason why I didn't initially pick this game up. Because I thought, you know what? It's just another version of Space Hawk. It's another version of one of these games that I already have where all these guys are going to move and then the aliens are going to react. Or, you know, one and then one. And then all... You know, that's what it was, right? That's not what this game is. This game is an incredible tactics placement game and that's why i love it and, it and it acts very quickly plays out very quickly and i love the random turn order you don't really know how each round is going to go because it's dictated on these cards here love that mechanic okay i'm going to put those cards right there we're going to go and grab level two and we're going to read our mission so i'll do here and tell us how to set up the rest of the board we're going to shuffle these guys up really good and this is our Labyrinth deck. If this deck ever runs out and we can't draw cards from it, the game would end. That is one of the mechanics that ends the game. The game will also end when, you're, when your Marines make it to um, the end, where basically what's going to happen is once you activate something, each level has sort of this thing you have to like do and activate, or a thing you have to defeat. And then what happens is these portals open up, but only one of these portals is actually a real open portal that can open. And I don't know which one it is because the back side of this is either going to look just like the front side or it's going to be it's going to look like another open blank space. Once that happens at the end of the level, you would then relocate the staircase to that spot and that's where the marines have to exit. And if you get all four of them out, it's a major victory. If you only get three of them out, it's a minor victory. If you get two of them out, it's a draw. And if it's any less than two, it's a loss. So that's how the game works. So that makes it kind of fun as well. There's a lot of opportunity to actually win uh, or get a draw or feel like you've kind of won. You only really have to get out two of those guys. But then that makes you want to come back and say, well, you know, I really want that minor victory. Or I really want the major victory. Um, and that's fun. So, and you can do the same thing for your campaigning as well. All right, so we got these all cycled up. We're going to put those right there, and we'll just flip those over. We're now going to go to our mission debriefing for level two. It says the Space Marines must neutralize the primary Lich Guard before activating the control console on the objective square to open the portal and escape, okay? So there's two things we have to do for level two. We have to take out this Lich Guard, the primary one, the first one, and we also have to activate the control panel. So it says here, the first Lich Guard placed during the Populate Labyrinth step is the primary Lich Guard and must be destroyed. Once destroyed, a Space Marine can attempt to activate the control console if he is standing on the objective square. This is described on the level one mission debriefing card. Basically, you have to roll a six to be able to activate the control console, and that is 
right here. Once the control console has been successfully activated, flip all the portal counters. Basically what we just talked about, that's what you're going to do. And then it tells you the game ends if all the Space Marines have been taken out of action. All the Space Marines are on the board, are on the new stairwell tile, or the Labyrinth deck runs out. Okay, If they're all on the stairwell tile, you win. If they're taken out of action, you'll lose, obviously. If this deck ever runs out, you can't flip any more cards, which means you've gone that many rounds, which I have found is pretty difficult to do. Um, I'm pretty good at this game, so you know I usually get um, not even anywhere near close to this deck running out. Uh, but that is an end game trigger, and I'm sure it will happen to folks. If at the end of the game all four Space Marines are on the stairway tile, the team in wins a major victory. We talked about that already. It's the different types of victories that you can win. Now for the setup of this one, it's a little bit different than level one, and it dictates that here in the rule book. You're going to roll a die, and whatever that comes up on, it's five. That's the translocator. That's what they actually call these little spots. I call them spawn points. That's the number that you're going to populate this primary Lich Guard. And this is the guy that needs to be defeated before you can take and get the command console. So you do have to take this guy out. And he's put right there. Okay, he's on five. And then what it says is you place a warrior on every other translocator spot. Let's make sure we don't drop that. Bear, can you get that for me? Okay, so what we're going to do here is go through the warrior's and we'll, do, we'll put a warrior on each one of these spots. Here we go, here we go, and here we go. All the rest of his tokens are gonna go back in the bag to be drawled over the course of the game. All right, we are now ready to start the game and we are ready to rock. So I like to put these dice right up where they go on the different characters. Okay, ready to go, let's do this. First thing we're gonna do is whose turn is it? Boom. Ah, starts off with a Necron turn. So we're going to look at our Necron card. And this one, there's quite a few things that it says on this card. It's maybe, it's mainly just some fl flavor text. And then it tells you what to do. Really what you want to look for is this right here. And basically it's just going to show you most of the time a number. This one says six. That just means place a guy on six. Guess what? There's already a guy on six. So it's going to call for reinforcements. I will read this first card just to give you a flavor. Some of the text says Necron reinforcements. Strange green lighting crackles and leaps opening a portal from another part of the labyrinth. A Necron steps through the energy portal, looks around with a shimmer of its glowing eyes, raises its weapon, and begins to stalk towards the space marines. Place a Necron minion counter on translocation square number six. Okay, now we're going to look. If number six is blank, we're just going to pull one out and put it on number six. Number six is not blank. So what that's going to do is that is going to call for reinforcements. That's not going to be good. So you're going to put one random... To every one that is adjacent, not diagonal, has to be completely up, down, left, right. And you'll see we are drawing random ones. I'm going to put one right there. Now if, a, now, if one of my guys had already moved to that spot, I'd be in trouble. I'd be wounded. I'm going to put one right there. Wow. All right. That was a load up. Now, we're going to need Brother Grimm to probably lay down some fire to start taking these guys out so we can start moving up our troops, get to this guy, take him out, and then get to the, com the command console and get it activated so we can relocate the staircase and get out of this place. We're not going to play the whole level team. We're only going to play one round so you get a feel for the game. All right, next turn. Whose turn is it? Oh, another Necron turn. Okay, Chrono Field. The next Space Marine who has a turn, whether in this round or the next, misses their turn. Ugh, that sucks. All right, so we're going to put it right there so we remember. Okay. It's another Necron turn. Unbelievable. Okay, Necron reinforcements. Place a Necron minion counter on translocation square four. It's getting ugly right off the bat. All right, four is already taken out. So we're going to, oh man, there's another one of those guys. We're going to put right there and we're going to put one right there. You won't ever put one on a portal and you don't put them, if it's going into like a corner or a wall, you wouldn't put one. Um, if there's already one that's to the side of it, you would just put it one more down that row. Okay, so they will spawn out pretty fast, and you got to take care of that. Okay, finally, Brother Grimm's turn, and you know what? I needed Brother Grimm to take a turn, but because of Chrono Field, he loses his turn. Next card. All right, we got Sergeant Cassius up. He is able to add one to the die roll made when he attacks a Necron that is in a square adjacent to him, and there is one. So for his first action, he's going to attack this warrior. The warrior is only a three. So he goes for the attack, and he gets a five. That's a kill. That easy, right? Goes back in the bag. Now, 
I can continue to shoot and try to attack ranged, because he can attack ranged or melee. It's just if I attack melee, I get a bonus here per, you know, his ability. Um, but if I'm not able to kill this guy and we get another six, then he's going to get wounded because he'll be standing here. And because that six is there, it will spawn a new one. So we got to be careful there. Uh, I am going to move him up because I'm, I'm confident that I'm going to be able to kill. So that's the second action. He has four actions. Here comes the third. That's a crit. He doesn't get anything for a crit. Some of these guys actually get an ability for the crit. I think uh, it's, it's Brother and Furnace, which is pretty awesome. That one's down. Um, that's the third action. And for the fourth, I am actually going to try to take out this guy right here. He requires a four or greater. And he is an immortal. We roll. We got the five. Didn't land in the box, but I'm still going to count it. You can attack diagonally. You cannot move diagonally. Boom. He's down. Okay, that was a good turn for Sergeant Cassius. His turn is now over. That's all four of his actions. We now go, whose turn is it next? It's a Necron turn again. All right, place a Necron minion counter on Translocator. Space number one. Space number one is right here. So we're going to build that out. We're going to get one there. We're going to get one there. And we're going to get one there. Because it's every spot that's adjacent to... The Translocator, if there's already someone there, just called for reinforcements. You can see you know, how many of these guys are on the board that we're going to have to deal with um, tactically. And that's what I love about this game. It's just, it's the tactics. Next turn. You can see how fast this is going, right? Like, if I wasn't talking and doing this video, you would just be burnt. I mean, you, you just burn through cards, right? Like, the turns are that quick. And that's what I, I mean. It says 30 to 45 minutes, I believe, on the box. But I can blow through one of these levels in 20 minutes easily. I, I think I've even gone through in 15 minutes before. You really can play these fast. Brother Grimm's up for the hit, okay? Brother Grimm can now attack. He's got three actions, range of eight. Brother Grimm is sick. He gets plus one if he's not attacking something that is adjacent, and he will not be. He's going to be laying down the bolt fire. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He can attack both of these guys, and he will. He's going to yell out to his brothers, Brother Frostclaw, Brother Infernus, Sergeant Cassius, take a knee! Brother Grimm's laying down the lead. <laughs> yeah! First action. That didn't hit the box. That is a plus one, which is four. This guy only takes a four. He is dead because of that actual plus one. Now, this guy here is the primary, and we need to take him out before we can do anything. Um, and if you want to, you can kind of mark, because there are other Lich Guards that are going to come out, so you remember who the primary is. I like to take um, just a little token, and I'll just place one of the Overlord tokens on that one, so I know. That's the guy I take out. Now, I just got to hit a, a better than five, a five or better, and he's dead. Uh, however, we talked about earlier, you can have one of those advanced cards where you can pull in a challenge card where you actually have to kill him twice to be able to progress. All right? There it is, with the five, he takes the shot for his second action, and he's able to take out the Lich Guard. So Lich Guard is down, he'll go back in the bag, and now the primary is down, and now we can get to the command console and try to activate the command console. So, so sweet. Now, he does have one action left, however, he can't move where another, where another unit is, so he's going to stay right there. And for this particular setup... It is a good strategy to keep Brother Grimm, especially when you got... It just happened to work out that this is the board that I chose, where the things went, and where I put the staircase, that I do have a nice line of fire down through this area, and he's got range of eight. So I'm going to play that to my strategy. I'm going to leave him right there. Next turn. Next turn is going to be Sergeant Cassius. Sergeant Cassius has got four actions, and he's actually going to move up and try to get here. So one, two, three, four. Now, he's on the command console, ready to activate. However, he has not, um, he doesn't have any more actions, so his turn is going to be over. We don't want to forget about our special um, things that we have as well. Uh, so let's not, let's not forget about those. I don't know if we're going to need to use them or not. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. Now, the only thing that's a little bit dangerous about being right here is you've got a translocator spot here and a translocator spot here. So if, in fact this translocator gets called it could populate a, a a monster on this spot and wound me uh and that's not good and so could five 
So we're going to have to be very careful here. I need to get this guy taken out. So I need to get another unit in, have this guy take a knee, and take this guy out. Let's hope that that doesn't happen. You know, I could have stopped Sergeant Cassius here, but I think it's I think it's better to get him in. All right, next one. All right, Brother and Furnace is up. Brother and Furnace has the Anvil of Strength. I don't think I'm going to need that. So we have three actions. He's got range of three. So um, one, two, three. Good Lord. Let's see. One, two, three. I'd have to be here. That's not going to work. So one, two. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to take my third action adjacent. Um, I'm going to take a diagonal attack at this guy right here because I can see that guy. And I'm going to come here. If I roll a six, I could kill anybody else he's adjacent to. He isn't, so that's not going to do anything for us. There's no reason to use our anvil of strength. There's only one guy. And I only need a three or better. So let's go for that. And I got the five, so that's a kill. And that's his third action. This guy is now off the board and killed. All right. Next, ooh, he's got another activation. And this is another cool thing. Some guys may get to go twice in a row. All right. So one, two, and now he is in range for his third action. One, two, three. He's going to try to kill this guy. I really need the kill on this. This is this is important. This is very important. I need the kill on this. So he's going to yell out to Sergeant Cassius to get out of the way. He's coming in with the flamethrower. And that's a three. Yes, for the kill. Okay. He's down. That's very, very good for us. And that would be his third action. His turn is over. We're now going into the next turn. It's going to be our Frostclaw. So he's going to go in. Uh, Brother Frostclaw is going to run in. He has got four actions. And I am going to actually... Um, I'm actually going to trail him in on this side. Um, no, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to trail him in this way to start taking out maybe some of these guys and watching that side. So one, two, three. Ooh. I don't want to go four because if I go four and I land on the six and I draw a card... It says, put it on six, he becomes wounded. So I'm going to leave him right there. I'm not going to put him there. And that's a very good strategy for playing this game. Don't ever land your guys on these spots unless you absolutely have to. It's a dangerous, dangerous move. Next turn. It is Frostclaw again. So I'm going to run in with one, two, three. Actually, I'm going to stop right there because he has range of six. And I'm going to attack uh, at range, try to take out one of these guys. Now, if he is right up against someone, he actually gets a free melee attack. That's his ability, that big knife that he carries. But I'm going to go ahead and try to take this guy out right here. You have to kind of take them out in order. I can't target this guy because this guy's in front of it. So I have to take out one of the uh, Lich Guards. So I do need a five or better. So this better be a good roll. And I got a two. So that's a total miss, shot and a miss. All right, and that's what it is. Round is now over, so what I would do is I'd come to this deck right here. I'd shuffle the deck up, and we'd have now a completely different turn order for the next round. I wouldn't do anything with my Labyrinth deck. I'd leave it right where it's at. It would only be cards that would affect something going into the next um, round. Would I leave out on the table? Other than that, uh, this deck will say as it is. And now we're going to start the new round, and you can see how that would go. Essentially, I'd be flipping these cards just like I did there. Okay, uh, here we go with, uh, you know, Brother Grimm again. At this point, I probably want to move him up a little bit, get into range to start firing at these guys. And then when it was Sergeant Cassius' turn again, I'd be rolling and taking all four of his actions to try to activate that command console. Because once that command console is activated, then we would flip all four of these. Let's just say we were able to do that. We'd look, up. Oh, there's the one that's open. And you can see these, the same on the back. It's still closed. This one is closed. That's the one we were looking for. At that point, you would take your staircase and you would relocate it over to this side of the board. And then all four Marines would have to traverse their way off and out of the level on this side so you can see it's going to be random based on where these are put because again i didn't know which one was the open one it just happened to be this one and in that situation for the second round they're going to have to fight through all of these guys to be able to get out that is space marines adventures in a nutshell that is the entire game you can see there i think just one round of play gives you a good feel for how this game works how simple it is and how it plays out and this is why I love the game. It's quick, it's easy, 
is extremely tactical. You really have to think about all your moves and where you're going and where you're placing your Space Marines. You need to think about when do you use your special abilities over the course of that level. And these become even more important strategically when you're playing the full-blown campaign and you're doing all three levels one after another. You have to survive all three levels. You will get some bonuses. You will be able to bring in your fifth brother here, your fifth Marine as a reinforcement over the course of that campaign. If you do have one of your Marines that gets taken out of service, you can bring in whoever you did not use. I just chose this one for our example. Uh, so that's pretty cool. You will get to interact with all five Marines if you do the campaign. And again, the campaign doesn't take that long either. When you look at each one of these levels taking essentially 20 to 30 minutes at most, you're looking at an hour and a half at most to get through this entire campaign. And you've got the whole feel of the game. Games Workshop, absolutely fantastic job on this title. Team, this is a buy. Absolutely recommend this. It's definitely got the seal of approval. Go out, pick this game up from Barnes & Nobles. If you come across it, you won't be sorry. So hit that like, click the subscribe below to join the team. Keep rolling them crits. This has been the McGuire Review, and we'll see you next time, Bear. Let's roll!